How you doing everybody? Today we're going to take a look at Finding Dory, the latest movie from Disney Pixar starring the voices of Ellen DeGeneres, Albert Brooks, and Ed O'Neill. The story takes place sometime after the events of Finding Nemo and mainly focuses on Dory, if the title didn't already give that away, a fish that suffers from short-term memory loss who is suddenly having flashbacks to her time before meeting Marlin and Nemo in the last movie. Through these flashbacks, she remembers she had a family once and now wants to find them, which is going to be tricky since all she knows is they are somewhere in Morro Bay, California, which is not terribly specific, but it's a starting point. So Dory, Nemo, and Marlin get some transportation from some friendly sea turtles and head off to California, and Dory inadvertently ends up inside the Marine Life Institute, which is a place where families can go to experience exhibits featuring all manner of marine life, all of which are narrated by Sigourney Weaver. They spared no expense. And while Dory is trying to figure out whatever happened to her parents, Marlin and Nemo are trying to find their way into the Institute to rescue Dory, and hilarity ensues. So I was a bit skeptical when this was announced, because I saw Finding Nemo, liked it a lot, but I didn't really think it needed a sequel. You'd think I would have learned to trust Pixar by now, because, you know, as long as they're not doing a Cars movie, it's probably going to be good, and this was. It was excellent. I really liked the story they came up with for this movie. I thought it was a great exploration of the Dory character and a neat little take on what it can be like to live with a mental illness and the struggles that can come with that. It also provides a look at what it's like for sea life to live in captivity and the negative impression it can have on the animals, even when we humans have the best of intentions. There's one scene in particular that takes place in a touch pool, which is almost like something out of a horror movie. A very tame and sometimes silly horror movie, but still. The returning cast slipped back into their roles like they never left. Ellen DeGeneres and Albert Brooks were both outstanding as the voices of Dory and Marlin. And we have a new voice for Nemo, Hayden Rollins, who I thought did a pretty good job of filling the shoes that Alexander Gould left. I presume because it's been 13 years and his voice has changed. And I was happy to find out that they did find a small part for him in the movie. So he's not voicing Nemo anymore, but he's still in there. We also have Caitlin Olsen, who plays Destiny, a whale shark that was a childhood friend of Dory's. Ty Burrell as Bailey, a beluga whale who is having some trouble with his echolocation. Diane Keaton and Eugene Levy provide the voices of Dory's parents, and whether Dory actually finds them or not, you're just gonna have to watch the movie to find out. Although, keep in mind it is Disney, so you can probably guess. We also have Sigourney Weaver, who's basically playing herself, and probably my favorite character in the movie is Hank the Octopus, who is voiced by Ed O'Neill, although, as Dory points out, he is technically a septopus because he's missing a leg. He is kind of a jerk at first. He's very cranky and ill-tempered, and not necessarily a bad guy, he just has an incredible lack of patience. Which does not do him any favors when Dory comes into his life, let me tell you. That is a match made in hell right there. There's also a couple of sea lions voiced by Dominic West and Idris Elba. Only in the movie for a short time, but they were a lot of fun. Nice guys, but very territorial. Poor Gerald. What did Gerald ever do to them? Come on. And since it's a Pixar movie, I'm sure John Ratzenberger is in there somewhere. He always is. As far as the animation, it's Pixar. Do I need to tell you it's good? Do I need to tell you it looks gorgeous, especially in 3D? Do I? I should hope not. It's Pixar. They've been doing this for quite some time. They've gotten quite good at it. And as is typical with Disney movies nowadays, there was a short film that preceded Finding Dory. It's a little thing called Piper, which is basically just a short story about a little baby sandpiper that's learning how to gather food. Not much to say about it, really. It was cute enough. And I'm told there was also a post credit scene, which I missed because I didn't know about it, so I left while the credits were rolling and I missed the damn thing. In hindsight, probably should have guessed there would be one, because Disney owns Marvel now, so of course they would eventually get in on that, but... Now I gotta go see the movie again, just so I can catch the post credit scene. Oh well. But honestly, I don't think I'd have a problem seeing this again, because it was fantastic. It is absolutely worth seeing at any price, even with 3D. Um, as far as whether it's better than Finding Nemo, I don't know if I would go that far, but it's still very good and definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. And that's about all I can say about Finding Dory. 
Till next time, take care.